So uh, contrary to our, you know, first impression, we might think that, you know, Islamic architecture first appear in the uh, concentrated Muslim region and uh, uh, in the uh, China proper, in the Han Chinese region, Islamic architecture might appear later. The reality is the opposite. Muslim and uh, Islamic architecture first appear in China proper. And uh, those Uyghur mosques were mostly from the Ming dynasty and the Qing dynasty, <clears throat> which is from after the 14th century. While there are some mosques in the Chinese uh, region that went back to almost the beginning of Islam as a religion. Um, <clears throat> so the, the mosques, mosques in China proper are, some of them are much older than the Uyghur mosque. And this is one of them. This mosque called the Huai Sheng Si mosque, um, the mosque for remembering the, the prophet or the, the saint. It is in the city of Guangzhou. And um, uh, the southern metropolitan by the Pearl River. Uh, <clears throat> it was first built in the Tang Dynasty. Today, the, the only Tang structure survived is the minaret, because the minaret was built in masonry structure, while the rest of the prayer halls were constructed in the traditional Chinese format. Right? This is the plan of the mosque. The minaret is here. And then the rest of the mosque follow the Chinese convention of building courtyards along a central axis. There is a first gate, a second gate, the main prayer hall, and then there's a, a platform surrounded by a, a porch, um, a corridor. Um, <clears throat> obviously, the minaret is in very different style than the rest of the mosque and built in a much earlier age. All right. So the minaret was built in the 7th to 10th century Tang Dynasty. And um, the majority of the mosque were constructed today. Um, the extant buildings were built uh, mainly in the Qing Dynasty, quite recent. Um, in the Tang Dynasty, mosques were built mainly by uh, Muslim merchants coming from overseas, all right? They were built by a foreign community for um, a foreign community living in China. In the Tang Dynasty, along the coast of China, there were many merchants from Persia, from the Arabian Peninsula, and from India. So those from Central Asia as well. So those Muslim population um, after long distance traveling, they very often stay in China for a very long time, goes back and forth. That, um, you know, um, going back to their homeland um, after years of staying um, in China. And uh, so that kind of travel usually, you know, you, is not uh, done very often. 
So the travel, you know, took a few months and uh, you stay in your destination for a few years. And then another, you know, travel of many months. It's, it's that kind of a, um, traveling. So it's, it's, it's not like, you know, you travel each summer, um, like those international students, you know, each summer you travel back to, to your hometown in China. And, and uh, some of them I know twice a year. But, you know, for, for the merchants, you know, working more than a thousand years ago, um, <clears throat> the duration of traveling and staying are both prolonged. So that was constructed for those foreign community. And today, of course, the mosque is serving a local Hui community. And the formation of the Hui ethnic group was way many centuries after the Tang Dynasty, right? So today it is a Hui mosque, but originally the mosque was not founded by the Hui ethnic group. So I think that I want to clarify that. Um, now this is the mosque, you know, the, again, the juxtaposition of a foreign style of masonry structure with the Chinese style uh, main kind of a building. We are looking, actually looking uh, from, from the platform at the gate. This is the platform for the prayer hall, surrounded by corridors from three sides. And that's the second gate. And then there is a um, first gate. And uh, that minaret is, is located to the west of the gate. Right? Let's go back to the plan. There's another important issue worth pointing out. That is the complex for the mosque is north-south oriented. Right? That's the arrow of north. It's following the Chinese convention, following the Chinese um, urban texture, urban um, framework of streets and avenues. So the main gates are from the south. However, um, the orientation for the prayer hall needs to be east-west because the Chibla direction is always on the west. So that's the Chibla wall. And that's the Mihrab, right? You can see that. Um, let me erase that with my awful drawing. So that's the Mihrab, obviously. The prayer hall is oriented east to west. So there is a transition. The platform made that transition. You follow the Chinese orientation, access the platform from the south, and then um, entering the corridor. And from there, you move on to the east side of the prayer hall. And the main entrance to the prayer hall is from the east. So there you make the transition from the north-south orientation to the east-west orientation and facing the direction of Mecca to have a formal religious entrance to the prayer hall. The prayer hall itself has its own um, access, has its own uh, stair which is on the east side. So you could also, um, as, as soon as you enter the second gate, you can also follow the corridor um, 
to the east of the building. And there you can have a formal ritual facing to the Chibala direction. Right? So there's a shift. There's a shift of orientation because of that Islamic religious requirement. And that is uniquely Chinese. Um, as a complex, the mosque fit into the Chinese urbanism, but for the individual prayer hall, it need also to fulfill the, uh, the religious um, requirements. Uh, this is a closer look at the Tang Dynasty masonry uh, <clears throat> minaret. Uh, <clears throat> it is kind of similar to the uh, some of the minaret in Baghdad that, that features uh, different steps, almost like the uh, the ziggurat from the ancient Mesopotamia. And in this case, there's also, you know, a two-step um, tower. Um, so it, it, it was linked to that, um, the Islamic tradition of the Middle East, um, especially those from the Abbasid, Abbasid dynasty with the capital city in Baghdad. The second oldest mosque in China is also on the coast. Well, this is uh, this one. It is on the Fujian coast uh, from the Fujian province. From Fujian province. <coughs> further to the kind of the northeast of Guangzhou. And this one was from the Yuan dynasty from the 13th century. Um, it is a pure masonry, masonry building. And this one, um, it is not just the minaret survived, the Qingjing Si Mosque um, in Quanzhou from Fujian province the entire walls of the prayer hall survived um, as well as the entrance. So this is a building constructed in masonry for the supporting, uh, supporting wall. Um, so it survived in kind of a greater um, completeness. Uh, that section, you know, I want to just point out uh, that section, that section drawing is showing the, the gate. This is the entrance, right? The entrance, entrance to the courtyard. And then this is the prayer hall. The prayer hall, again, there is a, you know, um, a transition from the north-south orientation. So that's the arrow for north, right? So that's the north. The whole complex was entered from the south, from the south side. That's the gate. But then a tran transfer needs to be made to be oriented toward west. Right? So this is the prayer hall. Um, this is the Chibla wall, obviously. Why? Because there is a recession. There is a recess in the Chibla wall, and that is for the, for the Mihra. So there is also a transition that needs to be made. And this section drawing shows the uh, section from this direction, right? Imagine you cut that gate um, this way and look at that direction. That is what you are looking at, right? So there's a... Um, the ceiling of this gate building uh, features a series of um, series of vaults, right? So you have these 
this vaults and um, um, kind of uh, constructed in a pure masonry uh, masonry tradition. And uh, again, um, Qingjing Si was originally built as a uh, mosque for serving a foreign community. Um, like Guangzhou, Quanzhou was also a major trading port. Um, since the Tang Dynasty. You know, during the Tang Dynasty, Quanzhou was already a very important trading port, uh, same as the following Song and Yuan Dynasty. Um, it's, it was a major trading port until the 15th century when the Ming Dynasty closed the border that include the coast not allowing kind of international tr trade um, freely along the Chinese coast anymore. That started in the 15th century. But before that, Quanzhou was a very important uh, you know, commercial city for trading. This is the gate, right? That's the gate we are looking at. You can see um, a true vaulted masonry structure. Um, and um, the gate features an arch uh, in a kind of teardrop shape at the, at the top. And that is, um, that is a north direction, right? Following the Chinese urban texture, the complex was entered from the south. And um, after one enter, so now we are in the courtyard looking south. So you just enter this space from that direction. And um, to access the prayer hall, you need to turn left, turn left to face the west direction. So this is the entrance to the prayer hall. And um, Originally, the tower on the gate, there were wooden structures to serve as the minaret. Uh, but today, that structure disappeared. And a small stone pavilion was constructed on the side, uh, sheltering a stone stele commemorating the construction of the site. Right? So the original structure, obviously, a combination of masonry wall, masonry load-bearing wall with um, a flat timber roof. And today, all those wooden part had disappeared. The only surviving element um, is the uh, masonry wall and the towers. So this is the prayer hall. We are looking at the Chibala direction. That is the mihrab, the recessed area. And uh, the Chibla wall is um, kind of decorated with those arches in the, shape, in the same shape as the gate. And originally, wooden columns would help to support a flat roof, right? So today, you know, the, um, the original site was no longer used as a prayer hall. It is preserved as a architectural ruin, a record of the early mosque of China. And a new kind of a mosque constructed in the Chinese style was built just next to it. Now, the third building we are going to look at um, in the Hui Mosque tradition is in the city of Xi'an. Now, Xi'an is the same location as the um, Zhou and the Zhou Han and the Tang Dynasty Chang'an. So this is in the ancient imperial capital of China. So this is in, in the city of Chang'an, 
just next to the great Tang capital, the palace of Da Minggong, etc. Right? But here we find mosque constructed following, of course, the Chinese convention. So looking at the plan, one might one might think that this is this is a a princely residence or um, a Buddhist temple. It could be all of them. Um, could be any of them. Um, the complex following an axis with accompanying structures symmetrically um, arranged along its side and the key monuments and the gates located on the axis. Um, but this mosque called the Huajue Xiang Mosque, the mosque at the Huajue Alley in Xi'an, its axis um, is east-west. So that's the um, arrow for north, right? So it's an east-west axis. Um, its gate is opened to a north-south alley. That's called the Huajue Xiang, Huajue Alley. So um, the mosque was named after the small street on which its gate opened to. And that is, a, a, of course, a um, advantage for mosque, you know, opening the, opening the gate on a north-south uh, street, which does not require a transition anymore. So one enter from the east and following the axis, you are facing Mecca uh, the entire time of the, of the travel. One thing, if you are experienced in Chinese architectural history, you probably should be able to tell that this is a mosque just by looking at the plan without looking into the interior to find the mihrab, minbar, or minaret, um, or you know, notice there's no statue of Buddha or Taoist deity. You don't need that. Just looking at the plan, you might also be able to tell this is a mosque. Um, this is not a Buddhist temple. This is not a princely, princely residence. The reason is the shape of this main building. You know, I mentioned before when we were looking at uh, the Da Minggong Palace, especially the Lin De Dian, the Lin De Hall. I mentioned that it is in square shape, and that square shape was composed of three rectangular, normal, conventional Chinese hall, and uh, with you know three roofs, but defining, defining a square covered area. And I also mentioned that the, this way of covering a large area using multiple roof attaching to each other would be adopted in Chinese Islamic architecture to create prayer hall because the shape of the prayer hall, you know, that rectangular singular hall um, does not fulfill that function very well. Um, the Islamic prayer hall, um, you know, a relatively kind of square shape would, would be so much e more efficient. And this is the example for, for that, right? So it's in square shape. However, that square shape, again, Um, is composed of three separate Chinese hall and a stacking into one another, creating this square shape. It's basically one, 
rectangular building. The second the rectangular building and a third rectangular building um, inserted uh, 90 degrees uh, into the square formed by the by, by the other two. And also the large platform should still remember the Guangzhou mosque, that platform, combination of platform with a prayer hall. It also became a Chinese convention. Elevated ground, a large area of elevated ground. Uh, and indeed, during Islamic festivals, the entire platform would be occupied. The exterior would also be occupied. In section, this is the platform. This is the entrance. The, you can see very clearly how two halls are uh, put side by side to create a square plan. And then a third, a third rectangle is inserted to form the sacred mihrab, right? So that became the mihrab, and that is the that is the um, um, chibla wall, right? So traditional Chinese timber frame structure was adopted ingeniously and recreated to accommodate the new foreign religion of Islam. Let's take a look at the uh, whole um, space. It starts with something really Chinese. Um, <clears throat> all right, so a wall, that screen wall, provide some privacy. The entrance is from the north and south, and there one make a transition immediately just before the first gate shifting to the uh, east-west direction and uh, next to that screen wall is a pure memorial archway called the pilo right so this is the uh, pilo. It's fun. It's kind of similar to the triumphal arch in Roman architecture, or the pylon in Egyptian Mesopotamian architecture, or the toli in Japanese architecture. Tolly. Um, it's basically an archway um, creating a ceremonial entrance to a sacred space. There's not necessarily a wall connected with it, so it's not going to prevent anyone from entering it. However, it gives that entrance a ritual significance, uh, like the triumphal arch in Roman architecture. So this pilo, this is the three bay pilo, pilo um, featuring sloping roofs and, uh, excuse me. <laughs> featuring that sloping roofs, brackets, and post and lintel structures. Chinese characters were inscribed in the central um, plaque. And um, so from every aspect, this is a Chinese architectural element incorporated into a mosque structure. <laughs> Following the central axis, there are more gate to pass. 
more gate to pass to reach the prayer hall. Um, so here we are looking at this section. There's another stone pilo, stone traditional Chinese archway. And then on its side behind it, stone steely, the stone steely following the traditional Chinese way of commemorating a significant construction were also installed. Right? There were steelies inside uh, with inscriptions. Buildings on the side frame the central axis symmetrically. And uh, a minaret constructed in the form of a Chinese pagoda right there. It is on the central axis, right? <clears throat> so this is the original place where uh, calling for prayer is shout out. And today there's no need for that, but uh, a very uniquely kind of Chinese minaret uh, incorporating into the garden-like setting for the entire mosque. Um, and after that, passing through more gate, pass through that minaret, you are facing another gate um, and uh, now the Islamic feature became stronger and stronger. Now on the gate, no longer Chinese characters were inscribed, but rather um, Arabic. The Arabic ins inscription replaced the Chinese inscription as what we have seen in the earlier memorial gates. And um, <clears throat> so beyond that, um, a, another pavilion right there, and that pavilion is a pavilion for ablution. Um, so there's a water basin inside, and it is combined with the Chinese garden architectural type of pavilion to provide that fountain for ablution. And that is just before ascending to the platform for the prayer hall, right? So we find this um, Chinese convention and uh, Islamic convention, ritual convention, Chinese architectural convention combined um, seamlessly um, into the uh, built environment. So um, slopes and steps leading to the platform and passing through another memorial archway and facing the entrance to the prayer hall, which is in the Chinese form of a sloping roof because that sloping roof was covering a rectangular shape so from exterior, you, you know, the hall work permanent, uh, you know, perfectly with the surrounding building, which are all constructed in the rectangular shape. And this roof is also in rectangular shape. Uh, so you won't notice, you know, it is a square space or a gigantic space. If they cover that space with a bigger, you know, square like roof, um, the, the building would look more foreign than Chinese. Um, but it is, you know, built in a way that work with other buildings uh, in greater harmony. And um, the buildings framing the side, featuring those kind of curved roofs um, and highly carved and highly 
decorative um, wooden members as well as kind of brick carvings. Um, the interior does look different, right? So the interior uh, featuring a large square space uh, for prayer. And um, that's the entrance. Um, you can see the border between the two rectangular buildings featuring double column, but creating a continuous interior space. And that is the direction of the mihrab. And the ceiling are painted in according to the Chinese convention, uh, painted ceiling. Now, another example we are going to look at is in the city of Beijing. Um, so I think, you know, this one I'm going to, it, it, it is going to be very quick, right? Um, I will just need um, like three more minutes from you because it's very similar to the examples we discussed so far. The only difference is the orientation, right? This is entered from the back, entered from the west. That's the entrance. So you need to go all the way around to go to the east to have a ritual ascending to the platform, to the prayer hall. That's the prayer hall. But the entrance is here. It's very close to the entrance, but you are not, of course, not supposed to enter it that way. So you have to go all the way around it and then come back have an interest, right? So that's um, the key. That's the entrance combined with a minaret, which is right there. Um, the platform with adopting Chinese civic architecture of bell tower, facing the prayer hall, um, entrance to the prayer hall and the prayer hall again using multiple rectangular building to form a large square interior. This is the interior. Chibala direction, the mihrab and the mimbar. Chibala direction and the ceiling next to the mihrab, it's specially treated. The rest of them, I'm just going to show you quickly. This is a mosque in, um, in Qinghai. Now I'm going to show you some interesting mihrab. Right? All right, so this is the mihrab in uh, Xinjiang province, mihrab in Qinghai province, mihrab in Qinghai province, this is a mihrab in Nanjing, in Jiangsu province. This is a mihrab in Taiyuan, Shanxi province, right? Mihrab in Henan province. Um, now let, let me show you a, a bunch of minbar. A minbar, minbar in Hebei province, Chinese in style. Show you a bunch of minaret Minaret in Xinjiang province, Central Asian style. Minaret, a hybrid um, from Inner Mongolia, from the Mongolian region. This is also a minaret in Gansu province. This is a minaret in uh, Gansu province. Now it looks really like a pagoda, like a Buddhist pagoda. This is also a minaret, right? So, with these examples, it shows that Islamic architecture can adopting local tradition and to fulfill the need of a local, the local Muslim population. 